Michael McKee from uh, Bloomberg Radio and Television. The base case of the committee seems to be that there is going to be at least one rate cut this year, but your growth forecast doesn't see any slowdown in the rest of the year, nor does the unemployment forecast see any uh, significant weakening of the labor market. And your inflation forecasts basically average out to no change. So if at the end of the year there is no change from conditions now, why would you anticipate cutting rates? What, what, it, what would be the point for a rate cut? Well, we think, we think policy is restrictive. And we think ultimately uh, that if you, if you just set policy at a restrictive level, eventually you will see real weakening in the economy. So that's always been the thought is that, you know, since we raise rates this far, we've, we've always been pointing to cuts at a certain point, not to eliminate the possibility of hikes, but, you know, no one has that as their base case. So uh, no one on the committee does. Uh, but so that that's, you know, that's how we think about it. And that's that's what we've been getting. That's that's what we've been getting is good progress on inflation with growth at a at a, uh, a good level and uh, with a strong labor market. Now, ultimately, we think rates will have to come down to continue to support that. But so far, they haven't had to. And, you know, that's why we're watching so carefully for signs of weakness we don't really see that. We kind of see what we wanted to see, which was gradual cooling in demand, gradual rebalancing in the labor market while we're continuing to make progress on inflation. So uh, I mean, we're getting, we're getting uh, good results here. Well, to follow up, is there <clears throat> any kind of uh, concern for the housing industry or financial stability banks in leaving rates where they are for too long at this point? Um, on housing... You know, the housing situation is a complicated one, and you can see that's a place where rates are really having, having a significant effect. Um, I mean, ultimately, the best thing we can do for the housing market is to bring inflation down so that we can bring rates down so that the housing market can continue to normalize. There will still be a national housing shortage, as there was before the pandemic. There will still be one, but the distortions that we see now with lock-ins and things like that, low, you know, low mortgages... In terms of banks, the banking system has been, you know, solid, strong, well-capitalized lending. Um, you know, we've seen good performance by the banks. Uh, we had the turmoil early at last year, but, you know, banks have been focusing on, on uh, bringing up their liquidity, bringing up their capital, and having risk, risk management plans in place. So the banking system, you know, seems to be, seems to be in good shape. 